Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So good to be back here at New Identity Church. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to just thank Pastor Geeky and the First Lady for inviting me back. You know, it's an honor when a pastor would think enough of you, or think enough of the Lord in me to come and stand behind his pulpit on his platform to minister to his people. That's a as a privilege and an honor. Um, so I just want to say good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to be back here again. And to see all your beautiful and handsome, smiling faces. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good, huh? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the past, uh, the, the young, the minister who opened up in prayer. And uh, i just like to uh, pray as well. Okay? So let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the worship that's gone forth. Lord, your word says that when we are gathered in your name, there are you in the midst. Lord, that you inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you, Lord, for this morning, the sweet praises, the wonderful worship, Lord, that we've experienced. And we thank you, Lord, that as our praises went forth and we worshiped you together in, in agreement, in unity, we thank you that our praises have come up before you, Lord, in a wonderful fragrance that you are so well pleased with. And so, Father, I thank you that we have the mind of Christ. Father, I thank you we came, we came in one way, but we're not going to leave here the same. Yes. Father, I thank you that we have eyes to see all that the Spirit of the Lord would show us. We have ears to hear all that the Spirit of the Lord would would say to us, Lord, that we might know these things of your word, the mysteries, and, and gain revelation and insight, that we might know these things and be confident of, Lord, what you've given us and who we are, that, Lord, that we may go forth out of this place even more with more boldness and confidence, preaching the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Uh, we give you all the praise and all the glory for every good thing we receive in this uh, in, through this word today, this word today, this morning, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, "Amen, Amen, Amen." amen. Well, uh, Pastor Dolores could not come with me this morning because she had a bunch of grandkids with us last night, and they stayed over. So I told her, "Just make sure the grandkids get to church." We got about nine grandkids now. Uh, yeah. Nine grandkids, uh, eight boys, but one, one granddaughter. So she had her hands full. Of course, you know, our, my, my daughters, go, they go to church a little early in the morning to help set up and get ready for worship. So she, uh, I said, just take care of the grandkids. And me and Pastor D'Angelo will go. And this is Pastor D'Angelo, my assistant this morning. So glad to have him here with me. So uh, real, real, real briefly, Dolores and I, uh, we've been doing a little traveling. Uh, we got invited last year after we spoke here uh, back to Belize to do a Christian conference there. We also were invited to be the keynote speakers in uh, Mozambique, Africa. We spoke to a very large uh, uh, conference there, praise God. Uh, I would say in the multitudes upward in the, in the thousands, you know. And in those meetings in Africa, particularly those meetings in Africa, the people are hungry. And um, we had many uh, church leaders and uh, leaders from different nations on the continent from Africa that came for that meeting. And so I uh, had the privilege of ministering to them. And uh, that, was, uh, that was something new and exciting for us. And it's a long flight to Africa. <laughs> like 20 some hours in the air, you know. So I, I can see why some of the ministers like they have their own plane. Because when you, when you fly in commercial and you're in and out and you're going through security and then you got to take your baggage and then you got to run with your baggage and then make sure you make your flight and then you got to, you know, uh, uh, make sure your luggage gets on the next plane. And that's a lot of work, you know. And then in some of those countries, right, they're, they're not like over here. You know, things have to move. You know, we, we, we're so customer service oriented over here. When we go to another country, like some places like that, like a third world country, uh, they kind of just like, you know, take it easy, slow down, you know, they, you know, so, wow, big difference, so. 
So, um, all the glory to Jesus. Amen. All the glory to Jesus because his word is going forth around the world. This morning, I want to talk to you about a prophetic word I received last year, in the end of, end of last year, in October. Um, and um, this word from the Lord has really become a mandate. And uh, as, as, as if the Lord has really charged me to take this word and everywhere I go, until he tells me otherwise, to stay with this word, to keep preaching this word and teach it, this prophetic word. And um, so this message, what I'm going to share with you today, uh, it's, it's a mandate for me. And the Lord told me, don't go off this message until I tell you. And uh, so I've been preaching and teaching it at our church since last year. And uh, uh, going to, you know, different different perspectives and different aspects of this teaching. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, the power of agreement for the coming unity of the faith. The power of agreement for the coming unity of the faith. Um, it's, it's really a message that's bigger than self. It's a message bigger than me and what I'm doing. It's a message bigger than you and what you're doing. It's a message to the church and the body of Christ at large. And, and particularly for the, uh, the, the fivefold ministry, the, ter the church leaders to really um, get a hold of this. Because uh, things are happening in the world right now. As you can see when you watch a little bit of the news, a lot of the end time signs are here. I mean, and your pace is picking up. It seems like time is accelerating. And prophecies are being fulfilled faster and faster and faster. Um, even now we're seeing some of the things that Jesus talked about when he talked about how nations shall rise against right, nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. The word for nations is the Greek word ethnos, which means ethnicity. So you're going to see a lot of Jesus. Said you'll begin to see the sign of the end times getting closer when you begin to see. Hostility between the races. A lot of talk, a lot of stuff going back and forth now. But this is an opportunity for the church. As, as, as things like that are going on in the world, right? They're fighting. That's our opportunity. God's going to put us on display to show how many people of different nations and, and walks of life can come together under one banner. Amen? Amen. In the unity of the faith. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is. Because Paul talked about till we all come into the unity of the faith. Say the faith. Okay. faith. And as you know, um, most of you know, I'm, I'm a teacher. I don't preach. Huh? Yeah. You know, I don't do that. Yeah, you know, you know I, I, I'm going to teach. Okay. So that's kind of like my calling is to teach. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, so how did this word and this charge come about? Uh, the, let me tell you something. Let me just give you a little uh, background here. The interesting, the Lord told me that this word that he charged me with last year, and I'm going to share with you this morning, is not a new word. Now, this is really interesting. This is what, get, what really got, uh, got me. The Lord told me that he's given this word to other ministers in the past. He's given the same word to other ministers. It's not a new word. He's been trying to get it to the body of Christ for, 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 for some time now. But because of persecution of this word, because of uh, the naysayers and, and, and critics and skeptics around this word, uh, many of them, many of the ministers kind of just shelved it or put it aside. And then some ministers... Uh, just wanted to preach something more exciting and more appealing to the masses. So they just kind of just, you know, put the put this word that God mandated and charged them. And he asked me, will you, will you, will you speak this word? Will you continue to stay with this word until I tell you otherwise? I said, Lord, yes, I will. And so, um, so, so it's not a new word, but it's a, it, it's really a new word for me because I've never preached anything along these lines. Um, and, and some ministers just completely stopped preaching this word because of all the, the criticism. All right. 
and then, you know, wanted to preach something more exciting. And so, um, because of the urgency and the very strong charge I've been given, woe to me, woe to me if I don't preach this word and teach it. And uh, continue until he tells me otherwise. Um, because this, this word I'm going to share with you today is, is, is tied into sub, such substance and great things that God wants to do. But until this word is preached and people have faith to receive it, understand it, and begin to walk in it. We won't see the things that Jesus talked about before he left when he said that you'll do the works that I do. And greater works than the works that I do shall you do. Think about that. Jesus said the works that I do at a minimum, at a minimum, we're supposed to be doing the same thing that Jesus did. Not just the pastors, not just the apostles, not just the teachers, the lay people, his disciples, right? There were no apostles when he said this at that time. It was Jesus and his disciples. And he said, these signs shall follow you that whom believe in my name. Shall you cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover, right? Uh, you shall uh, cast out devils, right? Uh, set the captives free, raise the dead, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cause the lame to walk. And so at a minimum, we're supposed to be doing the works of Jesus. But then Jesus says something really astounding. He says, and greater than these works shall you do. Now, that's a whole other teaching. I've taught on that at our church, about the greater works, what they are. But for the sake of time, I'm going to stay here. But, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is that there's so much that God wants to do in our generation. See, listen, you, you and I, we were born for this time. Amen. Amen. You're not here by accident. You didn't accept Jesus the day you accepted Jesus or the night you accepted Jesus. Because, you know... God didn't have a plan for you. Like you just, you know, there's something, something good to do. Amen. No, God has a plan for your life. Amen. And it's a great plan because we serve a great God. Amen. You, 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 can't get a, you can't get a mediocre plan from a great God. But we have, to, we have to bring this greatness together because it's not one person just great on their own. It's, it's collective greatness, right? It's, it's your grace, your anointing. I need. Because remember, remember the Apostle Paul talked about that Everyone has a supply. You have a supply. I have a supply that we all need and we can benefit from. Benefit from. Amen. 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 And so, uh, the Lord wants to do something very great in this hour and in this day and this season. And 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 because you know, the more I study this word that the, the Lord has given me, and 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 in, and in my conversations with the Holy Spirit, I, I see it. It is the call. That will release God's glory in the earth on a worldwide scale that we've never seen before. And, and what's about to happen in our time, because my generation, our generation is on the clock right now. We're on the clock. We're on the clock. God is watching us. All right. And, 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 I, and I refuse uh, uh, not to be part of what God is doing. At our church, we have something, we have a saying, we, we have saying that like the, like the young people, 100. Got to be 100. I said for 100 God, you gotta be, you gotta be all in. See what I'm talking about and what Pastor Deke has been talking to us about, about walking in the promises of God now. The promises of God can't just be on the book no more. I don't want the, just the promise on the book, on the pages. It's got, I, want the, I want to walk in the promise. I want to live the promises. Amen. I want to live in divine health and strength. Amen. You know, I want to be able to, when God tells me, cast that devil out, cast that devil out. When the Lord says, now lay hands on a person and, 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 and get, you know, get them healed, let's lay hands on them, get them healed. If he says, raise the dead at a funeral, hey, right? You better know who you are and you better know his voice. And that comes by spending much time with him. Spending time with him. God is wanting to speak with you face to face now. But it's going to cost us something. Put away the things that have... It's held us back. I had the Lord say to me that, uh, a few weeks ago. He said, the time has come when we will speak face to face. So when I heard that, I said, it really jerked the slack out of me. Stalled me. You know, straightened me up. Because that means now 
I really have to come correct. This is a, this is a greater accountability. But my goodness, the blessing that comes, you know, when God will speak to you face to face, you know why he wants to speak to us face to face? Because there's some things he's got to say right now. There cannot be no more delay. And you need to know with clarity and accuracy and go do it. We can't just be like, you know, hoping and wishing we're doing the right thing. The time has come that God wants you to know his good and perfect will for your life. Amen. Amen. Not, not just his permissive will. Or, or your hope and wish of doing the right thing. But he wants you to know that it is his will. So he, you can go get it done so we can get things going. Because these are the days of greater works. Let me tell we are the greater works generation. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. we are the greater works generation. Greater works generation. Amen. Amen. Boy, we got, we got a great greatness that God expects of us. Praise God. We may very well be the generation that sees Jesus coming. In, 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 the appearing in the clouds. Just before the great rapture of the church. We may very well be that generation. But we've got to be ready because Jesus is when I come, when I find people that are faithful. Amen. Playing church, the days of playing church are over. You know, the, day, the days of just coming to church and going through the motions are over. We need to be engaged, fully engaged. Amen. Really activated. Yes. So if anything, I've come today, today to minister to you, get activated. <laughs> right? Get up, let's go. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And so, um, the days of a little here and a little there are over. Because God wants to do great grace and great glory here. He wants to do great grace and great glory over there. He wants to do great grace and great glory throughout the whole world right now. Amen. And when one day I get to go with Pastor Dickie in Indonesia. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We love that. Amen. Praise God. One day we'll see. The Lord's, the Lord's will be done. Amen. Amen. And so um, we're going to see things we've never seen before. I mean, I mean, miracles, signs, and wonders. I mean, the, the prosperity, the wealth coming into the church. Because yes. now we're, we're mature enough to handle. We're good stewards now. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and, and, and the purpose for all this, right? You want to know the purpose for all this? It's for the end time harvest of souls. We need the finances to build the church, to expand, to do what we need to uh, uh, to. Preach the gospel. Cast the net. You know, because when you live on the earth, you need money, right? <laughs> the people want money. They don't want this faith, right? When you do uh, business with businessmen, right, in the world, right? You know, they, you know it, it takes finances. It takes resources. So God's putting that in our hands, right? If we'll be good stewards, and he'll give you more if you're a good steward. And how do you become a good steward? First and foremost, you tithe to your church. Have any tithers here? Praise the Lord. How, you, how many tithers I have? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> we need more tithers. <laughs> Amen. And uh, so, so, so uh, Pastor Dickey can do the work that God's called him to do. And we can have more people hired on staff. So they can help him with the workload. Lo, or workload. Amen. And, uh, and so Satan, Satan is going to uh, it's gonna attack. Because he don't want this message. He don't want this word to get out. All right. But he can't stop it. He cannot stop it. Tell your neighbor, your neighbor, hey neighbor. He can't stop it. He can't, he can't stop it. So, let me give you a little background how we got here. Okay? This word came to me. I was talking to one of my assistant pastors over the phone. And we, were, we got around to the conversation of prayer. And then when he said, he said, yeah, Lord. He said, yeah, pastor, you know, uh, Matthew 18, 19 is very important you know, that we be in agreement. And when he said Matthew 18, 19, the Spirit of the Lord quickened me. And I and I and I heard I heard this I heard this word here. When he said Matthew 18, 18 19, he, I heard there will be a great transition of faith going from 2018 into 2019. That you will see a move of my spirit that will bring about great agreement among my people. In my church and throughout my body, that will mark the beginning of the unity of the faith that will bring about great possession, great expansion, and dominion for my people in the earth. Let me say that again. 
Um, when he said Matthew 18, 19, I, the, the Spirit of the Lord quickened me, and I, and I heard these words, there will be a great transition of faith, faith transitioning. From 2000, in 2018 to 2019, that, that you will see a, a, a move of my spirit that will bring about the body, right? Great agreement. Say great agreement. Great agreement. And uh, in, in great agreement of my people in my church and throughout my body that will mark the beginning of the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith that will bring about great possession, expansion, and dominion for my people in the earth. And so how many of you know the difference between the church and the body of Christ? There's a, there's a difference. And Paul talks about this in Corinthians. There's the church, and then there's the rest of the body of Christ. And so, but it has to start with the church. Who is the church? The church leaders, those who are active. Uh, those, the church is, is, is the part of the body of Christ that, that's hearing from God and speaking to the people and, and kind of directing us and turning us in the way we're supposed to go. It's not the entire body of Christ. Now the church is in the body of Christ, but the church is, 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 is a distinction between the church and the rest of the body. Because how many know that there are people who are in the body of Christ who are not serving the Lord? There's people that are in the body of Christ who are just doing their own thing. They're still part of the body because they ask Jesus too hard. But they're not part of that church in the sense where the church is active and moving and engaged and doing the works of the Lord. That the church consists of, of the, uh, the, the, the government of God, which is the apostle, the prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. And Paul makes that distinction in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where in the uh, in, in, in early part of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about, and God has placed some in the body. He has placed, he has placed every member in the body as it has pleased him, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he has placed everybody in the body that has pleased him. And so, interesting to note that we don't place ourselves, God places us. Okay? You don't make your way, you don't make your calling, God, God you discover your calling. Right? And that's through prayer, fasting, and, and walking with God, and, and listening to Him. And, he, and you discover your calling, you don't make your calling, because the Bible says, He has placed every one of us in the body as it has pleased Him. But the good news is, whatever, you, whatever He's called you to do, find out what that is, because that's where you're going to be the happiest. That's when you're going to be the most prosperous. That's when you'll be the most blessed. See, the problem with so many good, they're not happy, you know, that, that, that what God has given them. And so they go out and try to do somebody, something else that somebody else is doing. And then they fall flat on their face. They, 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 they get frustrated. Why? Because God never called you to do it. There's no anointing. There's no grace there to do that. The grace and, and the anointing for, for what God's called you to do is right where, he, right where he's called you. And that's where you'll be the most prosperous, the most blessed. That's where you begin to hear God so clear. Not when you try to do somebody, something else that you're not supposed to. But you're doing what God called you to do. That's when you'll be the most happiest and blessed. Can you say amen? amen. And so, um, praise the Lord. Amen. And so, and then you go on and read at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He says this. And he has set some in the church. And he has set some in the church. The apostles, the prophets, the teachers. And he goes on. Right? So there's a difference, there's a distinction between the church and the rest of the body. Praise God. Can you say amen? Amen. All right. Here we go. So, um, glory to Jesus. Let's look at Matthew 18. And can we begin reading at verse, let's, look, let's begin reading at verse uh, Matthew 18. All right. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Matthew 18, verse 18. Let's start at verse 18. Amen. These are the words of Jesus. And Jesus says, Truly I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Do you see that? So, so heaven, we can't be waiting on heaven. Heaven's waiting on us. Huh? Amen. Heaven's waiting on us. Because Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Right? So, so, he says, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So, the, so here, the good news is, if we'll, if we'll do the works of Jesus, then we got, we got the backing of heaven. Yeah. Heaven's backing us up. Amen. Amen. We, got the, we got the backing 
and, and all the weight of heaven behind us. Praise God. Say amen. amen. So, and, and then he goes on to say in verse 19, again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree, say agree. agree. See, come into agreement. Shall agree on earth. Where? On earth, right here. Right here, us, agreeing today. We're going to get something from the Lord. Amen? He says, uh, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so praise God, we are gathered here in Jesus' name this morning. We're not gathered here in the name of a church or a name of a ministry, right? We're gathered here in the name of Jesus. Now that's really a key to understand what I'm, where, where we're going with this. Because it's not about a church, it's not about a denomination, it's not about it. my ministry. It's about who? It's about Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. He said, in my name. And so, the prayer of agreement in the name of Jesus is, is the catalyst for answered prayer. Let me say that again. The, the prayer of agreement in the name of Jesus is the catalyst, is the mechanism for our prayers to get answered. So, so here it is. We pray asking the Father in His name, it shall be done unto us. We don't pray in the name of the Holy Spirit. We don't pray in the name of the Father. Jesus said, what shall you pray in my name, the name of Jesus, asking the Father, it shall be done. Amen? Because why? Because the Father said Jesus, and He says, and the Father says, if you want me, you have to go through my son Jesus. Remember what, remember what the Apostle John said? He who has the son has the Father. He that has not the son has not me. So that's why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man cometh to the Father. You can't, you can't even get, to, you can't get into heaven going to, straight to the Father. Because the Father will tell, the Father will redirect you to Jesus. You can't, you can't even get to heaven through that. You can't get to heaven through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was sent to, to glorify Jesus, the witness of Jesus. That He's the way. Can you say amen? amen. So, okay, now. Lord Jesus. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ooh, there goes Ephesians just flying out of my blood. Praise <laughs> God, look at that, that's good. You know what they say, if your Bible's messed up, it means your life is not. <laughs> Amen? Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, what? Ephesians just came flying out of there. Praise God. And you guys, I used to think when I was a young Christian, you can't write in the Bible. You can't, you can't, you know, you gotta, you, what are you doing? I saw people writing in the Bible. I was like, oh my gosh, blessing me. But uh, it's not the pages that are holy, it's the words on these pages. Praise God. Can you say amen? Amen. All right. You found Ephesians chapter 4? I'm just going to put it right here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. The apostle Paul writes to the believers in the city of Ephesus. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, I plead with you that you walk worthy, walk worthy, walk worthy. Of the vocation or your calling. Walk worthy of your calling with you with wherewith you are called. Right? And in verse 2, in verse 3, he tells us exactly how to walk worthy of the calling. Right? Oh, look at that. Unity. I like that. Can we find verse 3? Verse, verse 2, verse 3. Okay. Now look what he said. Now, now in verse 2, he tells us how to walk worthy of the, of, the, of, the, of the calling, your calling. He says, with what? With all lowliness. In other words, humility. Walk with humility. He says, with meekness. Be gentle with each other. This is how we walk worthy of the calling, the holy calling. He says, with, with humility, with gentleness. He says, with long-suffering. Say long-suffering. Forbearing one another in what? In love. In love. Endeavoring. Verse 3. Endeavoring or, or pursuing. Pursuing. Pursuing what? To keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So this is how we walk worthy of the calling. My calling. I walk worthy by calling. How? By, by, by being humble. And being gentle with people. Being me. Not being you know, angry and, and hostile and and, and impatient. 
and loud. Jesus was not loud. The only time he got loud was when he was mad at the Pharisees because they, so, they were so religious, right? But Jesus said, learn of me. I'm, I'm easy. I'm of a, I'm a meek spirit, right? So I walk worthy of my calling with humility, with meekness, and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, and, and pursuing to keep, you know, working at keeping the peace, the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. For there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is above all and through all in you all. There's a lot of one in there. You see that? There's a lot of oneness that the, that the Spirit of God is saying to us. He desires us to be one. Amen. We need to be one. And when we become one, there is a, there, there is a, a presence of God that comes and a power of God that's released when we become one. How does that start here at, you, at, at New Identity Church? You become one with the pastor's vision and mission. Amen? Amen. You become one with what, what the, the, the teachings that he's giving. Because I know Pastor Dickey, he loves the people. Amen. He's not doing this for fame and glory, right? He's doing it because he loves the people. It's a calling on his life. And you can tell a pastor, right? Pastors are so lovable, you know? And, and, and every time I, you know, I'm with Pastor Dickey and, and, and the First Lady, we always have a, a, a good time, a good laugh. It's uh, that's that, that quality of a true pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so it, it, the Spirit of God is talking a lot about oneness here. And now, now look down here uh, in verse 11. And he gave some, Jesus gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? For the perfecting of the saints, the perfecting, the completing of the saints, right? For the maturing of the saints. Why? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the, the fivefold ministry is given to the, to the saints so the saints can go do the work of the ministry. Amen. 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 All right. And it says for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now this is, now verse 13 is very key to what we're going to talk about today. Verse 13, this one little verse tucked away in, 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 in Ephesians is the key verse to everything that Paul talks about prior to chapter 4 and after chapter 4. Everything revolves around this. This is where we are heading right now till we all come into the unity of of the faith. Say the faith. the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Say perfect man. Perfect. So God's expecting us to come into, into a place of perfection. Okay. Unto the perfect man. Right. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness. Of Christ. Say fullness of Christ. Fullness of Christ. Now, well, now, when Paul's talking here by the Spirit of the Lord writing, he's not talking about after the millennium or when we come back with Jesus. He's talking about a time and events going to take place in the earth before we see the appearing of Jesus. We are coming to that place. God is transitioning us from 2018 going to the, into the, to the years that are ahead of us to the place called the unity of the faith. How many know what the faith is? Because up until recently, I really didn't understand what the faith was. And the Lord began to minister to me what the faith is. So, the unity of the faith. This is where it's going to be kind of hard for some pastors and some ministers. Because we're so used to doing our own thing. Right? The unity has to be wrapped around. We all have to come together in unity around the faith. And the faith is what I call the doctrine and the truth. And what's, what's happened, too many pastors and ministers have started ministries out of doctrines in the Bible. Whole denominations got started from a doctrine uh, or a truth in the Bible, which is good. There, 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 there are doctrines and there are, there are biblical truths. But these, I'll give you an example. Ah, wonderful doctrine. The Baptist. The Baptist. Right? The Baptists got their name from water baptism. They all want, want to get everybody water baptized. 
right? Once you get saved, you, you can't get to heaven unless you get water baptized. Well, there's a well, there's a problem because if you have, if you if you can only go to heaven, you know, uh, through water baptism, then what happened to the thief on the cross? The thief on the cross did not get water baptized. He couldn't, right? He was on the cross dying for, you know, you know, being crucified for, for, for something that he did was wrong, bad, right? They say murder, the thief. So he could not get off the cross and get water baptized. But Jesus told him, this day you will be with me in paradise. But what did he do? He simply looked at Jesus and said, what did he say? Lord. He confessed him as Lord. He confessed him. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So not only did he confess Jesus as Lord, he had a revelation somehow that Jesus was not going to die and never, that Jesus was going to get resurrected from the dead. He would be raised from the dead. Isn't that Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10? That if you shall confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. He didn't say you had to get water baptized. Even though water baptism is a wonderful experience. And I would encourage every, every believer to get water baptized because it's, it's a beautiful thing. Because it's a profession of our faith to everybody that we identify with Jesus, our Lord, right? He's our Lord. We're, his, we're one of his disciples. But this thief could not do that. He just got saved that day before he died. Praise God. So there's hope for everybody. Amen. Even some of those uncles and aunts, you think they're never going to get into heaven. <laughs> right? They may, they may very well that day when they're, you know, to get ready to go. And, 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 you, and you're able to lead them in the prayer and accept Jesus. And, and, and the Lord will take that. Yes, I'll take that. Yeah. With your last breath. God says, that's good enough for me. Amen? Amen. Another, another, another doctrine in the Bible, which is a biblical truth, is, uh, is uh, you know, we ever heard of the Calvary Chapel? Calvary Chapel? Great ministry. Great church. I mean, I mean, you know, Jesus died on Calvary. I mean, beautiful. Right? Um, that, that's a doctrine. A whole, a whole denomination got started. Um, uh, uh, what else we have? We have the Assembly of God. Right? That's in the Bible too. Assembly of God. I mean, forsake not the assembly of ourselves. Coming together, Paul said, right? And so, that, you know, that's an, 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 I mean, there's, there's more and more. What, what I'm trying to say is that these are wonderful doctrines and wonderful truths that whole denominations and ministry got started. But it's not the doctrine. It's not the truth. And so the Lord was showing me, you, you know, because we have all these little sub subtexts, these sub-truths or sub-doctrines, is scattering my people. And we all get over here and we say, we're the Baptists. We all get over here and say, we're, we're the Calvary people. We all get over here and say, we're the Methodists. We're all over here and we say, we're the, you know, what? Assembly of God. And we even have one of these called the Church of God in Christ. Man, that's Bible, right? Church of God in Christ. Wow, how close, are, how close can you know, how closer can you get than that to Jesus? And, and you have people in that church. I've heard them all here. Unless you go to that church, you cannot be saved. And they say, God, that doctrine for the church of God in Christ. But the doctrine of all doctrines. Are you ready for it? Okay. Let's go over here to Matthew chapter 12. And there's a movement going on right now. Thank God that we have ears to hear this morning. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, the gospel of Matthew chapter 12. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Let's begin reading at verse 22. Verse 22. Then uh, was brought unto him Jesus, one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and Jesus healed him. Insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So people... You know, people were, their tongues were loose, people were able to speak, and, and, and the blind were made to see. And all the people were amazed and said, and said, is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, say the religious people. Religious people. Say the religious people. Religious people. They said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, or, or the devil, the prince of devils, he cast out devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, 
Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, is he divided against himself? How shall then his kingdom stand? He says it don't make sense. If I'm doing this by the spirit of Satan, by, by the, you know, the, the, the prince of devils, right? Casting, he goes, it's like, the, it's like, is the devil working against himself? He says, a house or a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Right? So, Jesus goes on to say, um, and, if I, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But listen, look, 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 look at verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Oh, did you catch that? Let me tell you something. How do you know the kingdom of God is here? Today when I walked in, I saw people getting prayed for for healing. Jesus is saying, will you find people getting saved, healed, and set free and delivered? Amen. The kingdom of God has come. Yes. Amen. Amen. When, the, when the word of God is being preached, not, not a philosophy or, or a, a man's doctrine. He says the kingdom of God is, I'm telling you, the kingdom of God is here this morning. It, it has come unto us. Because we're going about, like Jesus did, doing our Father's business. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now here's what I really want you to get a hold of. Oh, Lord Jesus. Well, stop right there. Hold your finger there. Go to, go to uh, Matthew 16. Ah, we need to find what the, what the doctrine is. Woo, some of you are going to get this before I even get there. So, praise the Lord. <laughs> Say, neighbor, neighbor. Are you tuned in? Are you tuned in? Tell your neighbor. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Matthew 16. And let's start reading at verse, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus got excited. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barzona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Peter caught this by the Spirit of God. It was revealed to him who Jesus was. And Jesus went on to say, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What was he saying to Peter? He said, Peter, upon this rock, this, this, this revelation, this revelation that the Father has revealed to you will become the foundation for my church. What? That I am the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the doctrine of the church. This is the truth. Amen. That Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God. All those, all those doctrines and those truths that we learn and we, 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 we minister and, and we, 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 uh, we, you know, we hold on to are wonderful things. But they cannot be above the doctrine. Whom do men say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the anointed one. Thou art the Messiah who came to set men free. And as soon as the church gets a hold of this, We'll begin to come together, I believe, in greater unity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And loving on each other. Because yes. it's not about my little doctrine. It's not about the little truths that I found out. It's wonderful that it may be and they help each other. But I cannot put that to, to, uh, above 
the doctrine and, and, and cause people to be scattered and, and people go into their corners and people go you know, in, in their, own little, you know, their own little groups and stay away from each other. Because if you're a Methodist, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, if you're a Presbyterian, if you're a Methodist, you know, and you, and you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're my brother. Amen. You're my sister. It's just like family, right? We, you know, we have family. We all, you know, sometimes come home. We sit around the table. And, and, and some of us have little differences or disagreement. But at the end of the day, we still come together. We eat and we love each other and we bless. You know, we have family time, right? And, 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 and it may and it be okay sometimes to agree to disagree on certain things. But we shouldn't let those things keep us separated. And there's, there's something from the Seventh-day Adventist I can glean from. I, 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 you know, I should be able to use that. There's something from the Baptist. You know, water baptism, they, they put an emphasis on water baptism. It's good. We should be water baptized. I should, I should be able to use that and glean from them. And, and I'm telling you, and, and there's some, you know, the Pentecostals, right? Oh, there you go, Pentecostal. The day of Pentecost. Right? It's a doctrine. It's a truth. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And they all spoke with tongues. But I can't let that keep me separated from, you know, my brother and sister. I believe on, on, on the day of Pentecost. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. And hopefully the Baptist or some other brother or sister can, can glean from me and learn from me. And we make each other stronger. We make each other better. Yeah, yeah. We make each other healthier spiritually. We bring it all together. And you make one big pot of stew. Right? <laughs> I like stew. I like, you know, like, you got to have some onions. You got to have some meat. Put some bacon. Maybe some chicken. Some shrimp. Oh, Jesus. It's all good. Amen? Amen? All that good seasoning. Made in love. Praise God. And so, let's go back here to chapter 12. Oh, this is really, very, very, this is really big. Verse 30. I never saw this before. Verse 30. I never saw this before in this, in this light. I've read through this many times. But verse 30 says, Jesus said, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathers not with me scatters. See, the emphasis here is on Jesus. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, I am gathering my people. I am not scattering. I am gathering. I am gathering. I am gathering. The Spirit of God is gathering. He's not causing division and schism and scattering us abroad. That's not the Spirit of God. You know what that Spirit is? That's the Spirit of the Antichrist. What is that? What is the Spirit of the Antichrist? It's Anti means against the anointing of the anointed one. The anointing removes burdens. It destroys yokes. It brings people together. It doesn't scatter people. It doesn't push people away. So, so the Lord is taking us, and, and it's, I believe it's going to be, we're going to see it in our, in our, in our lifetime, our, our generation. We're going to see the church come together in great unity of the faith, which is who do men say that I am? The Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And we could do more together. See, see, even Paul said, to, he, he wrote to the, the, the believers in the, in the city of Corinth, right? He said, what's all this, this division that I hear? All this schism, all this talking going on. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Paulus, I'm a, I'm a Paul, I'm a Peter. You see what's going on? The denominations that we do, we call it denominations now, right? And Paul said, wait, 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 wait. Who are we but men that preach the gospel? It's Jesus who saves. We, we, we sow the seed and we water, but it's the Lord who gives the increase. He says, get your eyes off my man and get your eyes on him. Paul says, Paul says, all things are for your, all, for your good. You can take some from me. You can get some from Peter. You can get some from Apollos. It's, it's, for, it's, all, it's, for, it's for all, all things are for you, for your sake. Amen. Amen. 
All things are for your sake. Amen. And Paul knew. He was smart enough to know that he didn't, he didn't know it all. You remember Paul? I'm going to tell you. Paul had an anger problem when he first started. Right? Remember he was a Pharisee for many years? I mean, he was, you know, he was going home, man. He was going after Christians, getting them killed, trying to get them killed. Man, he still had an anger problem after he, saved, after he accepted Jesus. Remember he wanted to get rid of Mark? Because Mark was too slow for him. Remember that? He said, you know, I, you know, Mark, you, you, you know, no. But later on, as you begin to read the Apostle Paul's letters, he says, the Lord begins to deal with him more in love. Look at his letters. Start to deal with more and more with love. And then later on, he said, I'll bring John back, bring John Mark back. For he's, he's good for the gospel. Amen. But here's the point. I think, I think Paul had a, remember we had an argument with Peter? It was so bad that, you know, that you know, he chewed him out in front of the Gentiles. Come, how come you act like this when you're with the Gentiles and you come over and you act different over here with us, with, with, the, with the Jews? And then he had, another, he had another falling out with Barnabas. It was so big that they went, they went different ways. So Paul had an anger problem. So Paul, you know, later on, Paul realized, I got to get a hold of this. <laughs> I got to watch it more in love. And then Paul began to teach more in love, right? And Paul got a revelation of love. Amen. Say amen to this. Amen. Now, look at something here. Oh, Jesus. This is the doctrine. This is the truth. This, who do men say that I am? Jesus says, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Think about that. That's, that is the faith. That is our faith. That's the faith we hang our, we stake our life on, right? Everything else doesn't mean nothing if Jesus didn't die on the cross and shed his blood and resurrect from the dead. Paul said that, right? He said, if Jesus had been that risen, then our faith is in vain. We have believed in vain. So the doctrine, the truth, the faith is who do men say that Jesus is? Because that's the only thing that's going to get you into heaven. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, um, look at, glory to Jesus. Uh, let somebody say amen. 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 Look at Psalm 133. Mm. The Spirit of the Lord is saying to his people today, starting with the church and throughout the body, I am gathering. I am gathering, I am gathering. So I'm, I'm telling you one thing, starting with me in our church, at our church, that, that we, we've been so mindful of that right now, about being gracious and being meek and walking in love and pursuing peace and, and bringing people into the faith, which is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's who Jesus is. Amen. I mean, people try to get Jesus to, you know, condemn people. And what did Jesus do? Jesus, I mean, time and time again. Like the, like the lady who was caught in adultery. He said, where are your accusers? He, goes, he, goes, uh, he says, neither do I condemn you. He said, go and sin no more. Right? I mean, time and time again. Jesus was about gathering people. All right, ready? Psalms 133. This is a Psalm of David. Oh, bless the Lord. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. Say unity. Unity. This is, the, this is King David. How pleasant, how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment or the anointing oil. Upon the head that ran down upon the beard, Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Ramon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there, there were. There were. The unity. He says, For there. David says, There, where? The unity. The Lord commanded the blessing. My Lord. For we dwell together in a unity. There's an anointing that comes. The presence of God is, 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 is welcomed. And there's a the blessing is, is at, its, at its strongest. 
The blessing of the Lord is in our midst today. What is the blessing? What is the blessing? Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Ah, see, we, we, we do not have the spirit of poverty. We have the spirit of the blessing. Amen. And, 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 and so, I mean, Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord maketh his people rich. And he addeth no sorrow. Another word for sorrow is toil. There's no toil. When you're walking in the blessing of the Lord, there's no toil. It's, 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 it's the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. And if you're in business, oh my gosh, how much more? How much more if you're in business, you need the blessing of God? Come on. But, to, but, but we, have to, we have to understand what, it's, what that's all about so we can have faith for it, yeah. right? Yeah. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, but, but, but if no one is teaching and preaching this, there's no faith for it to understand that blessing. So there's no expectation for that, that this is part of our covenant. This is my this is my covenant. I have a, this is my covenant right because of the blood of Jesus. I have a blood covenant through Jesus's blood that's unbreakable because I didn't make the covenant. Jesus and the Father made the covenant. So it's a, it's a it's a blood sworn covenant in the blood of Jesus, and and and, and it's it's in heaven. It's recognized in heaven, but we have to establish it here on earth because it's it's established in heaven. As far as in the mind of God, all He says, all my promises. Right? Come on, Second Corinthians one twenty. Second Corinthians one twenty. Come on, where is it at? Second Corinthians. <laughs> oh. see, I what? When I got a hold of these, these these scriptures and found out, you know, these are promises of God for me. I said, I'm in. I Second Corinthians one twenty. All right, ready. Oh, listen to this. Now, either God is telling the truth or he's lying. But I, I believe he's a guy that tells the truth. For all the promises of God, all of them, not some of them, all of them, in him, in Jesus. How many of you are in Jesus Amen. this morning? Amen. We're all here in Jesus, right? We're all, in, we're all born, of the, born of the Lord. He says, in him, he says, are yes and amen, amen. to the glory of God. So God is glorified when we walk in the promises of God. But the point I wanted to make here, that God says, all my promises are yes. So as far as God's concerned, every promise that you claim, as far as he's concerned, to him, are yes and amen. You can have it. He's just waiting for us to say yes and amen. And say, yes, Lord, I believe I receive it. It's mine. Thank you, Lord. I take it. Because he's already said there are yes and amen. And so Psalms tells us that he settled his covenant or his word in heaven right the word of God is settled forever in heaven but he needs us on earth to settle here on earth yeah. because even though there's great now listen okay here we go here about the, here's, here's the power of agreement there are three main agreements right the three primary agreements these are the big three okay there's the agreement in heaven right John the Apostle John talked about there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which we know is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. One translation says, and these three agree as one. So the most powerful agreement in the universe, known and unknown, is the agreement of the Godhead. The second most powerful agreement is between heaven and earth. Between heaven and earth. Our agreement with the Father. That's why Jesus said it's up to you on earth to get it done. But we need to be in agreement. So if you're in agreement with heaven, then I can release that power. So the second most powerful agreement is between the church and, and, and heaven. And then the third most powerful agreement, which is a man's agreement, when Paul talks about a man's covenant, is between men. Men who make agreements and covenant with each other. That's the least of the three. But we, are on, we, but we get out on the first two. Praise God. Amen. 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 Our covenant is, is, is supernatural. Yeah. It's supernatural. Amen? Because what we can't do in our own ability, the Holy Spirit will do for us. Yes. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Because, listen, we, we, we need the anointing. Yes. Amen? Yes. Because what God's called you and me to do is supernatural. If, think about this for a moment, and I'm getting ready to close. If we could do what God calls us to do in our own natural ability, 
he would never have to have sent the Holy Spirit, who's called the helper. He would never have given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit to walk in that power of the gifts. Amen? Amen. So, so, so we need the anointing. <laughs> uh, we need the Holy Spirit who brings the anointing because he's, he's, he's the one that, right? Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Spirit, because he's anointed me. Right? So where the Spirit is, there's the, the anointing is strong. Now, now, the wonderful thing is that we had this anointing on the inside because the Holy Spirit's here. But when we come together and we release it together, like a, this court, it, it, it's, it's stronger and greater. Amen? Because we can do more together than we can do apart. That's right. This is why the devil fights this message. This is why the enemy uh, uh, it, it tries to cause division and schism. To, to, to get, get people offended when they come to church. Oh, I don't know. The pastor didn't say hi to me today. <laughs> really? <laughs> the pastor got so many things on his mind. You know, as a pastor, I know. See, sometimes, you know, it's, it's funny because I was there. I was there, you know, I had my, my little family. And then, you know, uh, you know, things are going on in my life. And I, I want the pastor to pay attention. I need the, the pastor to, to hear me. And, but we don't realize the pastor got five or six families he's dealing with. Plus his own family. Amen? So we have to give our pastor some, uh, uh, some, some love, some patience. Just like we would do for each other. Amen? And, uh, and pray for our pastors. And don't get easily offended. Because the devil wants to get people offended. And, and so, so what? They get, they get, they get, you know, offended, and they get, you know, and, and, and Paul says that we gotta watch out because that become a root of bitterness. Yeah. It become a root of bitterness, and then when it becomes a root of bitterness, it's really hard to get that out. And you know, you might have to fast and pray, you know. <laughs> I mean, fast for you know, because you don't want it to become a root of bitterness. And so, so, so the, the purpose for the, the, the Satan to get you offended, so he can he can isolate you, get you to go. Because he, he knows that what God has called us to do together is greater than we can do by ourselves. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You received that this morning? Yeah. So, 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 just so you know, the faith, the unity of the faith, the faith is what we stake our life on, what we hang our head on. Because without this doctrine, this is the doctrine, no one gets to heaven. And Paul says, and it's all in vain. If Jesus not, had died on the cross, shed his blood, and resurrected from the dead. So that doctrine, the faith, is who do men say that Jesus is? Thou art the, the Son, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And let's start coming together. That's why I appreciate you guys allowing me to come and minister to you. It's a blessing. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I sit here and I listen to the praise and worship and the word and, and see the, you know, how you guys are ministering to the people here in the front. That's, that's the works of Jesus. Amen. That's where the blessing is at. Amen. 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 Keep doing that. Do more of it. Amen? Just don't, wait, don't, just don't wait for the pastor to do it, you know? Start praying for people next door. You know, Lord, send me to Africa. Lord, send me around the world. The Lord says, go next door. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go next door, Lord. I want to go. The guy next door needs to know me. Yeah. You know? Or the guy in the supermarket or the guy in the store. Amen. Amen. But we, we have the truth, so we, we can be confident and bold about our faith. Amen. Because our faith gets people healed, set free, and delivered. Yeah. You no, know, Allah. I mean, uh, as far as I know, I've, I've, I've never read anywhere or heard anywhere where, where, where uh, uh, what's the prophet's name? Muhammad. Muhammad's not raised from the dead. <laughs> right? Buddha's not resurrected from the dead. Right? right. right? Herod Krishna, not resurrected from the dead. There's only one that says he's resurrected from the dead. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. He lives forevermore. Amen. 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 <laughs> 